What if I told you that it's possible in Minecraft to encrypt messages using the same exact algorithm used by KGB agents during the Cold War? Yes, that's right. I made a redstone machine in Minecraft that can encrypt messages in such a way that not even a supercomputer in the real world would be able to crack the message. Wait, hold on, you might say. Surely, if you have enough computing power, you'd be able to crack it eventually, right? Nope. Due to the way that this method works, even if you had an infinite amount of computing power, you'd still not be able to crack the message. I find it pretty funny that it's possible to write messages inside Minecraft that not even real-world supercomputers can crack. But first, how do you actually write a message using game mechanics that Redstone can interact with? There are books and quills, but currently there's no way to read the actual contents of a book with redstone, let alone write in it. So I came up with this. What you can do is take stackable items and rename them to letters in an anvil like this. So if I spell out the message hi and put it inside of a shulker box and then put this shulker box on top of a hopper filtration system that has a filter for every letter in the alphabet, I will be able to detect what letters are written inside of here and then combine this with the wiring for an encryption algorithm, automate the entire process and you'll be able to encrypt messages inside Minecraft. And that looks a little something like this. To encrypt a message, you need the actual message and then a key to encrypt the message with. So here I've got my message, I'll read it out for you. This is a secret message. And for the key, what you could do is go to random.org, generate a random number from 1 to 32 for every character, repeat that 27 times and there's your random key. But for convenience, I decided to add a generate key functionality that will generate a key shulker for you by just pressing this button. So let's do that. So it's been a couple minutes and our key has arrived. Now, as you can see, all of the characters in here are just random gibberish. Uh, they were all randomly generated by the machine. Now what we do is we take our message we have our key and we have our message and then we put both of these shulkers in the input chest right here. Okay, it's been another few minutes and our message has been encrypted. Don't mind these empty shulkers here. This is our encrypted message or the so-called ciphertext. Now let's see how it looks like. As you can see, the ciphertext just looks like a bunch of random letters, just like the key. And in fact, if you gave this to a random person, they will be able to do nothing with this. Even if they write a third party program to try and analyze this, they will find absolutely nothing. Only if they have the key, they will be able to decipher it. So here we have the key that we used to encrypt the message. Let's try to decrypt it back to the original message using the key. So we throw them both in the input chest and we will have our plaintext message back. Okay, I'm back again and we have our message. Let's see if it decrypted correctly. This is a secret message. So that was the machine in action. Now it's time for the explanation. Okay, welcome to the explanation. There will be a world download for this machine in the video description so you can play with it yourself. And I also believe that the best way to understand this machine is to play around with it yourself and see it work. 
So yeah, so the way that the actual encryption is done is using the one-time pad or OTP algorithm. So you have your plain text and you have your key and those two are XOR together. So if you don't know, the XOR function is a binary function. It takes two inputs and produces one output. And if one of the inputs is high and the other input is low, then the output will be high. But if both inputs are low or both inputs are high, then the output will be low. So this function is applied to every plain text bit and each corresponding key bit. And um, this will produce your ciphertext. Um, and the beauty of this is that it is actually reversible. So you have your ciphertext and your key and you do the exact same process backwards and then you get your plain text back. If you were to try and brute force every key combination, you would simply end up with every single possible message combination and you would not know which one is the real message. And that is why even if you have an infinite amount of computing power, you cannot break this encryption. The downside of OTP encryption, however, is that the keys have to be as long as the message. And also, you cannot use uh, the keys twice. So if you use a key once, um, you can never use that key again. So if you want to encrypt another message, you will have to generate another key for that. And if you reuse a key, then your messages will immediately be compromised. So make sure that you're uh, generating a new key every time for every message. The theory is great, but how is it actually possible to implement this in game? So in order to be able to do this, the snowballs have to be converted to binary. And whenever you input a shulker with snowballs, it gets elevated upwards into an item uh, pushing system with slime blocks over this water ice lane over these uh, over these hoppers and every hopper filter is filtering for a different letter and when a certain letter is picked up the associated binary code will be stored in memory so every letter here as you can see has a unique binary code and that code will be stored in memory here and these uh, these pistons with these blocks will act sort of like a, a very simple XOR gate. So as you can see, this is an XOR gate. If either one of the inputs is high, then the output is high. But if both inputs are high or both inputs are low, then the output is low. So if this if this block is in this position, then the output will, will be high. And if the block is in this position, then the output will be low uh, because there is a rail down here. And this rail is causing uh, these observers to fire, uh, but they will only power these rails if the block is in this position. So um, yeah. Uh, the first letter of the first shulker is going through here. By the way, the reason we use snowballs is because they are a stackable item, which means they can be filtered, uh, but they don't take as long as uh, 64 stackable items because uh, if we use a stackable item with a stack size of 64, then it would take four times as long. Um, so the first uh, the first letter of the first shulker goes through here, here, it gets filtered. The associated binary code is stored in memory. Then the first uh, letter of the second shulker uh, comes through and the associated binary signal for that letter will then be exhort with whatever is stored in here. And then the, the um, resulting signal will be transmitted along these five rail lines here. And these rail lines uh, are going over observers that are um, powering pistons for the binary decoder. So the binary decoder takes the 
binary signal and uh, converts that into one of these rails being powered off. So right now, uh, this rail is powered off, uh, but depending on which binary signal comes through here, a different rail will power off. Here's a little downsized model of this uh, decoder. And um, there are three bits here. So there are two to the power three or eight different outputs. Uh, right now it's in position number zero and it's from zero through seven. And if I activate the first bit, it goes in position number one. And now it's in position number three. And now it's in position number seven. So you can see here how this um, decodes these bits into a single line of output and these are just redstone blocks that are alternating differently based on the bit and one of these rails will turn off and what that uh, the powering off of that rail what that will do is it will update one of these observers and these observers are pushing a, a piston, a piston is pushing a node block into this position. So all of these node blocks um, are now lowered, but if one of them gets uh, fired, then the node block will be raised here. And what that will do is it will allow the droppers right here with items to dispense their items. So there is a um, redstone line. I don't know if you can see a redstone line right there. And this is diagonally above the droppers. Uh, so they will not power the droppers. But if there is a note block in this position, then the note block will update the droppers and the droppers will fire their items into a water, um, a water ice uh, system that will transport the items to a shulker filler right here that is the output shulker. Okay, the machine is running right now and you can see the two shulkers here are dispensed and these two torches are alternating to alternate which shulker um, uh, is, is drawing items down. So there is a hopper clock system here that is responsible for alternating these torches getting all the timings right and then you can see the items being pushed along here getting picked up by the filter and then the associated binary code is transmitted down to the memory and the XOR operation happens the lines the lines flash the decoder gets activated and the decoder causes these note blocks to move which will uh, select a different dropper to dispense its items so now this one is dispensing items so the letter f is getting dispensed here and this goes up to the output choker and yeah this is how it's all working in action Every letter in the machine has plenty of storage, um, but if you use it a lot, you might be running low on some letters. And if that happens, then one of these lamps will turn off. So if I am running low on the letter D, then this lamp will turn off and I will have to restock. So the way you do that is open this trapdoor and then there is a barrel right here and you just place a bunch of snowballs that you've renamed to the letter D in this barrel and then the lamp should turn on again and you're good to go. In terms of key generation it's pretty simple the machine just goes through the exact same process as if you were trying to encrypt or decrypt a message but instead of getting the binary signals from the letters in your input chokers, it will get the binary signals from a uh, dropper randomizer array. So there are two items in here, 
and only the shovel gives a strong enough output signal to be detected. And that's how we get a random 5-bit signal. And this is repeated 27 times for every letter. And this is how we get a random shoker of letters. So that was the explanation. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. Or there is also a Discord channel in the video description where you can find me and ask me questions if you have any. And if you haven't seen my other video yet about high-speed wireless redstone, the way that this machine encodes and decodes messages uh, might be a really interesting way to implement sending wireless readable messages. So that might be something, something interesting for the future. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and see ya.